Good morning. It's <clears throat> it's Thursday morning, uh, the morning of the last day. We're going to hike out this morning. Well, it won't be morning by the time we get out, I'm sure, especially since um, we're not going to get a real early start. Uh, you might think I'm getting a real early start from the general dimness of the environment, but in fact it's a little after 7.30. I get up about 10 after 7. I was asleep. Um, and went and retrieved my uh, bear bag, or sack from uh, the bear box. And since it's my last day, uh, and I have extra room in my food bag, which is where my trash goes, um, I uh, emptied the, the bear box of uh, most, but not quite all, of the, the trash that was in it. There was a little bit of food, like a half-empty uh, freeze-dried backpacking meal package, but mostly it was just empty plastic bags and stuff. I don't know why people don't pack that stuff out. It's not like it's heavy or it takes up a lot of room, but anyway, uh, there's just a little bit left that someone else is going to have to get. Uh, so, uh, we're back in the hammock. Uh, we've got some uh, water on the stove to make some tea, and once that's set, we'll make uh, granola again and have a cold breakfast, although a warm breakfast might be nice. Uh, yeah, but probably more trouble than it's worth. It's about 52 out, and as you might be able to tell, uh, quite misty. It's not actually raining, uh, although the rain did persist into the into the night. Uh, I think around 2 o'clock was the last time I was pretty sure it was raining. So after I lay down to go to sleep last night, uh, which was pretty early uh, since I, I finished my book and uh, well I had more to read in the Kindle but um, I needed to get fully encased in my down to warm up so I was lying there thinking and it occurred to me that that I was not a happy camper I was not enjoying the camping experience and I had to stop and try to think why that might be and it's uh, it's because I'm cold. I was cold, and I don't like being cold. Uh, and there was no reason. I wasn't cold um, head to foot or anything. My uh, you know, main body felt fine, uh, and even my hands weren't weren't too bad. But my feet were, were from the time I got into camp until uh, which was early, and until um, well well after I got into bed, they pers they were cold. And that made me unhappy. And I don't have an explanation. Uh, if you've watched a couple of my videos, you know that my body reacts oddly to not really very cold temperatures. As I said, 52 now, and I'm sitting here feeling quite fine. Um, but it occurred to me how much more miserable I would be if I were here um, and in these conditions and in a tent rather than under a tarp. I mean, pitching the tent is no worse than pitching the tarp, I suppose, but but then to get into the tent, you've got to get down on your hands and knees and crawl in. Uh, you inevitably drag a huge amount of forest duff into the tent with you. Uh, you have to change clothes um, lying down, basically. Um, you can't cook in there. So you would have to have been out in the rain cooking. Um, and in the morning, you have to pack up a wet tent, which I can clearly recall is a miserable experience. So I should really count my blessings. Um, I was able to sit here under my tarp and uh, change clothes, having a place to stand and a place to sit, uh, cook a meal, sitting right here in the protection of the tarp. Sleep in the hammock without worrying about rocks and roots under my back. Um, what do I have to complain about? <laughs> so, eh, this morning we're counting our blessings. 
So by the way, it took it took a full hour uh, after being fully encased in my uh, underquilt and uh, over top quilt uh, to for my feet to finally warm up and and I was toasty and I initially got into bed with this second layer of fleece on and got warm enough that I took that off and just slept in my base fleece which is what I normally do so it was just a question of of being sufficiently insulated for long enough to get my circulation freely flowing and there's probably no real solution to that it's uh 20 after nine and we are finally packed up so a little better than two hours today uh to get going all together we're just not getting much better at this. Um, not that it really matters. So uh, perhaps I'll show you the map a little later when I'm warm and maybe things will be drier. I don't know. Um, but uh, the basic plan is to hike about seven miles south on the AT to back to Sage's Ravine. And then the Paradise Lane Trail, back to the Undermountain Trail, back to the car. About 10 miles altogether. Uh, we're going to go over Everett and race. Uh, maybe somewhere along the line there'll be some signs indicating mileages. Um, I'm guessing we're not going to see anything from uh, either of those unless the weather changes quickly, dramatically. Um, so it'll be more Hound of the Baskervilles. Uh, type stuff. Um, but I need to start walking. I'm not really that cold. My fingers are okay. Um, but, you know, my clothes are all wet and whatnot, so uh, I'd feel better if I were drier. So we are back at the Gilder Pond parking area and a state park here. Uh, and there's some picnic tables over there. And so I'll uh, use them as an opportunity to show you the map briefly. So, Glen Brook and Hemlock Shelters were here, and now we've come up to here, near Gilder Pond, and we're going to continue, and it's not that far, up to Mount Everett, uh, where there would be nice views if there were, if you could see anything. And then continue south on the AT, uh, there's a... Side trail goes down to, there is a campsite down there. And continue to Race Mountain. I don't remember how much of an up and down there is. And then along a uh, ridge. And we're going to run right off the edge of the page here. Uh, but we're going to pass a Laurel Ridge campsite. Maybe we'll check that out. It's relatively new. And... Uh, Sager's Ravine is right down here, and maybe if we get a chance we'll take a look again, but I don't want to take the map out in this conditions, but I'm going to go uh, through Sager's Ravine and then back to uh, the Paradise Lane Trail, bypass the summit of Bear Mountain, hit the Under Mountain Trail, and get out to the car. Well, it seems kind of odd, but there's a sign here denoting distances to various things in the middle of nowhere. It's not a trail junction. It's not. It's just a piece of trail. Anyway, another tenth to the summit and the Race Brook Falls Trail, which is the one that had that campsite down to the east, uh, is seven tenths after that. So we are at the summit of Mount Everett. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how much you could see here. I'd forgotten that actually, for the views for the most part, you needed to climb the fire tower, which was here the last time I was here. So you can see how long ago that was. Uh, but is is no longer here. That was a job. Uh, anyway. It's 
from signage, AT to the left, Laurel Ridge campsite I mentioned, 3.7 Sages Ravine campsite, uh, which we toured a little, is 5.6. Two thousand six hundred and two feet. Well, I think we've seen all we can see here. So it's a few minutes before 11 and we have finally reached the intersection with the Race Brook Falls Trail. So there is a campsite uh, with a privy, just two tenths of a mile. I've never been there uh, and I'm not going today. Uh, there are some other signs we can go see what they say. So we've come 1.9 miles. Uh, from Hemlock's Glenbrook campsite area. And we have 2.8 to go to Laurel Ridge with Race Mountain between us and them. Uh, so the descent off of Everett was uh, rocky, slabby, uh, and slow. So uh, seven tenths of a mile. Uh, at two miles an hour, which is what I try to average over the course of a day, don't don't always hit it for sure. Uh, that should have taken 21 minutes, a tenth every three minutes, and and in fact it took 37 minutes, so just a few minutes shy of, of twice uh, that. So we did we did a little over a mile an hour coming down that, but you know the rocks are wet and therefore slippery, and as an added benefit there's leaves on them in places so you know I, I think I changed my mind I think I will go down and check out the campsite as opposed to uh, Glenbrook Racebrook Falls campsite does have a little map which is handy there are three tent platforms mm, none of which uh, is really usable uh, in conjunction with a hammock hanging over them and the tent group tent sighting area is a uh, group tenting area uh, doesn't have anything too promising uh, in general the uh, it's pretty open vegetation wise although there's lots of places where obviously people have camped in the past where they're now discouraging camping so on the whole, I'd say this is uh, not a great place uh, for for a hammock. All right, we are back at the AT. It's about 22, 23 minutes after 11. Uh, 2.8 miles to Laurel Ridge campsite, the next known point. Race Mountain in between to go up and back down. Although, as I recall, the ascent, the descent is gradual ridge walk and should be pleasant uh so uh if we if we make two miles an hour we should get there at oh ten minutes of one or so um the uh the weather has progressed from being foggy to being heavily overcast to being just overcast i'd say at least down here and uh, and it's definitely significantly brighter than it was. So again, who knows what that means? It probably means that the sun will come out just at the moment we find the car.
it's almost exactly noon and I am standing on the summit I, I'm pretty sure of Race Mountain doesn't seem like there could possibly be anything higher here uh, and as you can see there's not much to see uh, actually when I when I arrived here there there was a view across the valley uh, across East Road into Mount Washington State Forest, uh, Mount Frizzell and the ridge up to Allender, but it's gone now. Uh, nothing to the, whoops, don't fall down. Nothing to the east. And, oh, a second ago I could see something, well, a little bit over there, uh, in a northish direction towards bear and you know, once in a while it gets a little bit brighter but uh, definitely no actual sunshine and no blue sky okay that was a uh, a nice gradual ascent uh, from the trail junction below up here to race a um, little ledgy like where I'm standing now uh, in places but uh, not steep ledge so easily walkable um, a nice climb and as I said that's my recollection of what it is going back down the other side so we are getting a, a bit of view to the south southwest and southeast still pretty misty out there though I um, just did a equipment change. Um, on that side of my pack, I'm going to have a hard time showing this, I can tell. Uh, I've got a thermometer. Uh, I used to keep the thermometer uh, in a little carabiner in the upper pocket where I couldn't possibly reach it if I wanted to. Uh, just because I didn't have a better place to put it. A lot of people uh, put them on the front someplace, but I, I couldn't figure out quite how to do that and didn't want to do it uh, because I was afraid that you know body heat would, would affect the temperature reading, and I'm all for accuracy. Uh, but I didn't like the fact that I couldn't check it with the pack on. So uh, what, what occurred to me to do, I had a little bit of extra uh, shock cord, and I found a place to... Uh, tie it to the pack and then tie it to the thermometer and then slip the thermometer into the lower pocket and uh, I can't I have to grab it with my right hand and I'm currently holding the camera with my right hand so we're gonna shift up here and here it is right here and so I can pull it out and read it even if I have to get close to my face, I've got enough. So actually, I can probably shorten this uh, some. And it's 60 degrees, which is good to know. And then I would get better with practice at this, but uh, which side is that on? Try to get back in the pocket and clipped. Yeah, like that. So we're still perfecting uh, the craft. <laughs> we'll see how that works. I'm concerned about that cord snagging on things or getting uh, snagged on me when I'm putting the pack on. Um, so on the first backpacking trip I ever took, I walked over these ledges on the south side of Race Mountain and thought it was spectacular. And I'm very happy to say that in the 40 years or more that has passed, this view has changed not at all that I can see. All right, it was clearer then. <laughs> you could see further. Uh, 
but it's one of my favorite sections of the trail as much as I've done which is a lot So we have arrived at Laurel Ridge Campsite, or where the side trail is to it. It's probably not very far in. But it's quarter after one, when I thought I'd get here at 10 of one. So we're behind our time. We're going to push on. Can't do everything. Well, it's about 10 after 2, and which is the time that optimistically I thought I might be at the car, and I'm 3.2 miles from the car. Uh, 2.1 on the under, uh, on the Paradise Lane Trail to the junction with the Undermountain Trail, and then 1.1 uh, on the Undermountain Trail, which which is what we actually already did uh, the first miles of trail. There's a little bit of blue sky up there and a little bit of sunlight down here. Oh, wait, let me see what the temperature is. Uh, hold on. I had to adjust. It was, it was reading Celsius. Uh, well, it's only going up a little. It's about 62. All right, the end is in sight. It's about seven minutes of three and we've uh, reached the Under Mountain Trail. Uh, so the Paradise Lane Trail wasn't uh, as smooth as I might have hoped it would be based on the name, but uh, there wasn't much elevation change, and so I was able to move along and actually did close to three miles an hour. Uh, so now it's 1.1 miles back down to the road. It is 3.20, and we are back at the car in the parking lot. The car is safe and sound, which is a very good thing. Uh, the sky is about 50% blue. So another good hike. That will probably do it for this season. Uh, someone who seems to be as susceptible uh, to the cold as I am um, should know his limits. So uh, we'll, we'll move on to uh, indoor activities. I'll probably do some uh, gear review type videos uh, over the winter just to keep my hand in and Hopefully to, uh, you know, be interesting and informative to other people. Um, so that's it. See you on the trail, but not soon.